Hello everybody and welcome back to today's video. Today we are going to be learning how to connect MongoDB to a plugin inside of Minecraft and you can use it to connect and like send data to it and take data from it if you want to save stats or any of that. We're not going to be going over actually saving data to the database. This video is going to be fully just setting up the database, getting it connected to your plugin so you are ready to go for the next episode which will release hopefully pretty soon now that I'm on more of a routine with the coding videos. 5PD coding, 5PD type of uh, work also coming very soon. I promise. I've been very busy this week. I'm finally getting back into actually having time to do YouTube. Um, so I'm going to be putting more effort into these videos and they're a little bit longer. Yay. Because I know a lot of people wanted coding. So we're going to do that today. There's a few things we're going to need. The first thing is we're going to set up a free database over here at Clever Cloud. Link down in the description below. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Um, but I use it pretty much for all my development work because it gives you some free MongoDB databases. If you don't use Clever Cloud, I recommend just running a MongoDB database off a $5 digital ocean droplet. Both the links are down in the description if you're interested in checking it out. To get started, you're just going to go ahead and click login or sign up for an account if you don't already. When you are logged in, it's going to take you to like this little console place here. What you're going to do is you're going to click either personal space or add an organization. If you want to add an organization, you can go ahead and do that. You can enter all your info about it, or you can just use your personal space, click create. And then from here, you're just going to click an add on. Um, and then from your add-on, you're just going to scroll down to where you see MongoDB. Let's go ahead and click select, and you're going to take the dev plan, which is just your normal 500 megabyte dev plan. It is free. You're going to click next. And then you're just going to click the only one that's available for the um, free plan, which is the Paris. Um, and then you can fill out the name. In my case, I'm going to say MongoDB YouTube Tutorial or something along the lines of that. Go ahead and click next. And then... Once you load in here, it's going to take a second, but then it's going to load you to the page where you get all of your database details. So you can see here's the host name, database name, username, password, and port. All of this would have been changed by the time you see this video, so please do not try to connect into these strings. People did that in the past in my old videos, and they're like, it doesn't work. Yeah, because you're using my data. Don't use mine. Make your own, please. All right, so now that we've done that, we're actually going to go ahead and set it up in the plugin. There's a few things we need to get started first. Um, we're going to be going to our Maven dependencies file here. If you don't use Maven, I highly recommend you use it. I have went over it again in a the first video of this series, which is linked in the cards or in the description below. You can go over on how to create a plugin using the Minecraft development plugin, which automatically sets up your Maven for you, which is really, really awesome. Anyway, we're going to add a new dependency. To add a new dependency, you're just going to put dependency and then press tab, and it will autofill all of the info you need here. And the first one you're going to do is Mongo, or it's going to be org.mongodb. Don't auto tab it because it's going to insert stuff you don't actually want. Um, and then from here, what you're going to do is you're going to, in the artifact ID, you're going to type Mongo dash Java driver, and then you can see it's automatically imported. Then you're going to type version and you're going to type whatever the version is. I believe the current version 3.12.7. So you're just going to import the latest version. And then in the top right hand corner, just click this little load Maven change or click uh, control shift O. And then it will go ahead and reload all of the things that you need here. Go back to your main class. I don't recommend really doing this in a main class unless it's just an easy plugin like this. If you don't do this in a main class, just do it in a separate class and import the connection string to your on enable. Um, but anyway, we're just going to add some stuff at the top here. So we are ready. We're going to add the Mongo client. Um, so just go ahead and import Mongo client. And then we're just going to call this Mongo client. Then we're going to also import the Mongo database. And then just go ahead and do Mongo database, just like we did there. And then you're actually going to import Mongo collection, which is going to give you a collection. And you're just going to add a document to the end of here. Um, all the code is also lo uh, located in the um, description below if you're interested. And then this is going to be whatever the collection name is. In my case, I'm going to say server collection, just because that's where our data is going to be stored. That's all you have to have at your top of your class. And we're just going to make a new public void um, and we can call it connect or something um, just to connect to the server. And this is actually going to be where we put all the code, where we connect to um, MongoDB. So we are ready to go ahead and set up our connection string. Yay. Um, the first thing we're going to do is actually going to set the credentials for the database, which is going to be technically authorization using those details we got from Clever Cloud already. So the first line we actually have to type is we're going to go ahead and set up a credential. So we're going to do Mongo credential, and then we're just going to call it Mongo credential, and it's going to equal a new Mongo credential and then create credential. Your first string is going to be your username. Your second string is going to be your database name. Your third string is going to be your password. And then at the end, you're just going to do two character array and then go ahead and um, end off that line. We can now import this info. So if we go back to Clever Cloud, we can get our database name. 
we're just going to go ahead and paste that in the database. We can get our username, which is uh, these random strings of letters and names. That into our username and we can get our password which is just going to be also a completely random password and we can go ahead and put that in our final slot here we've set up our mongo credential now which is actually going to allow us to connect using that details now we actually have to connect to mongodb using the mongo client to do this you're just going to do mongo client which we actually specified up here at the top and that's going to equal a new mongo client and from here, what you're going to do is new and then server address. So this is going to be where your server address is. So if you put in the host name and then your port 20170, I believe is the port we're going to check 27017. So very close to what I put there. And you're just going to do port. And for your host name, it's just going to be whatever your host name in Clever Cloud is. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in. Then after that, what you're going to do is you're going to do collections. And then it's going to be actually grabbing a singleton list. And in this case, it's actually going to be our Mongo credential. So kind of explaining what this does, I'll put this in full screen so it's a little bit easier to see. What we're doing so far is we have set up our credentials. We are connecting to our host and our port name, and we are using that credential list um, that we've just made right above that. So we've successfully imported um, our credentials and actually connected to the client, but we haven't specified our database anything yet. So we're going to do Mongo database equals the Mongo client um, dot get database. And then this is where we're actually going to do um, and get our database from. Um, and this is going to be whatever our database name was. In our case, it is the same one we have up here. We're just going to paste that down here. And then the final thing we actually have to do is specify the collection. So server collection equals Mongo database dot get collection. And then this is where we can actually specify the collection name. In our case, it's server because we're just going to make it server. We're good to go. That's all you actually have to do. That's You've connected to your MongoDB database. You've connected your collection to it. You're good to go. Just to add a little bit more of a useful thing, we're going to do bucket.getconsender.sendmessage. Uh, we're actually just going to send a message um, in green that says connected to MongoDB. Exclamation point. That's what we've done. In our on enable, we're just going to call the connect method so it actually connects to MongoDB. We're good to go. There you go. You've done it. You've set it up correctly. You've gotten all that running. All right. So now that we have set this up, what we're going to do is our final step is to export our project. So we're going to go to file project settings, go into artifacts. And if you don't already have an artifact, I was testing this earlier. So you probably have a blank screen like this. Just go ahead and click plus the jar and then from modules with dependencies, click OK, and you can see it's automatically extracted our Mongo driver. That's exactly what you need. You can customize the path if you want it to export somewhere else. Just press apply, OK. Finally, just gonna go ahead and click build, build artifacts, rebuild, or whatever your build options are. For me, I already had one, so I press rebuild, but you can also plus build. Both pretty much do the exact same thing unless you actually need it to do something different. Um, so there we go, we have created our plugin. Let's go ahead and test it. All right, so I have uh, dragged in my Mongo jar into our coding plugin server. We're going to go ahead and start the server with the start.bat file or wherever you start your server. What we're going to wait for in here is we're just going to wait till a green connected to MongoDB starts. So you can see it is successfully connected. It also spams like cluster uh, connected enabled Mongo. And then it says open connection. This is all normal. Um, it spams like this for a reason. It's not like on. It's just telling you what's happening. Um, it's opening the collection. It's connecting to it. So we know we have successfully connected to our MongoDB, which is very exciting. Um, if you have problems with this, there's a lot of support forums around the place that really help out with this. Um, one thing I did want to mention before I end the video is there is a way to get rid of this connection uh, spam. You're just going to do system.setProperty. And what you're going to do from here is you're going to just go ahead and make debug.go. And then you're just going to do another line true. And then you're going to do one more, which is system.setProperty. And then this one is going to be debug or db dot trace and then once again you're just going to do comma true just like that and then you can also what you want to do with this is you want to go ahead and set the logger so this actually takes effect and you're going to do logger and then it's going to be mongo logger equals logger and you can just go ahead and import that dot get logger and then in this case it's going to be org dot mongo db dot driver because that's the one we imported in maven we're good to go. We have successfully set this. Um, and then your final thing you have to do is Mongo logger or lobber. I, I type lobber. Why did I type lobber? Um, and set level. And then you're going to do level dash um, warning. So level warning. 
that's all you have to do to go ahead and set that. So what this has done here is it's actually gotten rid of that spam. So if I go ahead and build artifacts and reload the server, um, we're going to see that it actually doesn't spam anymore. All right, so I've imported the new jar. I'm starting up the server and you're going to see when we start up, it's only going to have that connected to MongoDB. It's no longer has any of the extra spam. We're good to go. Thank you for hanging out with me today. The code for this uh, example plugin is down in the description on a GitHub link. Go check it out if you want. Um, it won't have any of my database details in it and the database details have been changed. To the next episode, which will hopefully be coming out later next week, we're going to be going over how you can actually insert data and use data with this. Um, I can't wait to share that with you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. My name is Noodles. I'll see you in the two days for the next video. Probably 5 p.m. 5 p.d. or a Minecraft server review or something. I don't know yet. I'll see you. No, he wouldn't.